E convidamos então o professor Kerb Tree, que vai nos falar realmente onde está a carne, né? Quer dizer, o, a organização e a infraestrutura de dados. Thank you and good morning. It is such an honor to be invited to be here on this great occasion. And on behalf of the Odom Institute, the International Federation of Data Organizations, and the newly created Global Dataverse Community Consortium, I would like to thank you on this great, great achievement of 20 years of great work. Uh, you've been promoting open science for many, many years, and that is something near and dear to our heart uh, at the Odom Institute. Uh, we've been working with uh, data for over 50 years, and we'd love to, to work to make that open and to help everyone uh, become open science. So, as I said, we've been around a long time, and our goal is to help research in the social sciences, and we see that as very broadly. Uh, research in social science now is, involves health sciences in many, many, many different disciplines. So we're very open to helping everyone, and we're here to help the journals and the researchers deal with this data and these data issues because we think that they're very, very important. We've been working with our partners at Harvard University for over 12 years in collaborating with data platforms to help with data publishing and helping journals and researchers deal with that data. And it, and it seems like a simple thing, but as you get into the details, it gets very complicated. So we want to incentivize really good data management, those data management plans and plans for that data that start early in that research life cycle, not after the publication, starting early thinking about it. It's much more economical to do this as you go along rather than waiting till after you've published and someone asks you for that data. We think and believe that these FAIR principles are the pathway to that and start thinking about FAIR principles early. And Dataverse platform that we help develop and we use implements these FAIR principles. <coughs> these repositories are now all over the world. We were the, uh, the first adopter 12 years ago uh, outside of the Harvard University. Uh, so we worked to partner to begin to expand and now we have uh, research institutions and repositories all over the world using it. Uh, there are 33 uh, of many, many disciplines. One uh, very close to here uh, that are great partners here using our Dataverse software, and we'd love to help more and more of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> no. <Not me. Nah. laughs> so in order to help this, we've created this Global Dataverse Community Consortium. So Peter Dorn, Merce, Krosas, and myself think that we can build, build this community and, and help, and help all these new groups that would like to use this tool. We encourage sharing and data sharing, but is data sharing enough? Just because you shared that data, uh, can you replicate the science? Open science means to replicate that science. And early on, the, the question was, should you publish your data? Is it important? How can you have open science if you can't replicate it? And you cannot replicate it without the data. You must have that data to replicate it. Many journals uh, in, in the social sciences are starting to realize this. Uh, and in the United States, we see that more than 50% of the top journals are saying, yes, you must or you should publish your data. So we're seeing a movement, and some are more aggressive than others. So we've been working with our partners up at Harvard to help build tools and things the repositories can help to help facilitate this and to help journals and researchers publish that data. That'll in involve a couple of different things. We talked about education earlier today. Some of the speakers mentioned education. Education is real important, but we also need some tools. Uh, one of the, the areas you spoke earlier about was tools. Those tools need to exist. At the Odom Institute, we've been collaborating with the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to help work on something we're calling CORE 2, the Confirmable Reproducible Research Environment. The whole idea here is
is that you want to be able to reproduce the data. The Center for Open Science uh, created these, uh, these top guidelines, and the highest guideline is level three. And when you publish uh, in a journal that's supporting these top guidelines, not only are the articles and the manuscript reviewed, but the data and the code are reviewed. The author must submit the code and the data to a third-party review. We are doing that at the Odom Institute, and we're working with uh, two uh, political science journals to do it. It seems pretty simple, right? You have a manuscript, it's got a figure, it's got a chart, you have data, you have code. Let's see if they work, right? You've done this, this is your profession. How hard can that be, right? Well, it seems simple, and there's simple you know, there's four different areas here. You have authors and editors and curators and verifiers. And what you really want is this badge, this open data, this open materials, this replicable science badge. But there's submission processes. There's all sorts of tools along the way. Everyone has their own computer with their own software on it. And a lot of this is custom software because really good research is cutting edge research that uses tools that are specifically built for those applications. They're stored data files and text files all over the place. And as we talked about earlier, sometimes you can't move them. They're too big or they're private. Then there's the email strings, back and forth. We're talking between the editor, the author, the statistician, the curator. We're trying to make sure everybody understands how the research happened. Imagine explaining your research to someone who's never seen it and never done it over the computer in a different place with an email. That's very difficult. It's back and forth. So how do we do that? It actually turns out it's not so simple. There's many, many, many things here, right? There's all sorts of pipelines here and many, many steps. And this is very hard to read, but this step 10 through 12 is where you go over and over again. And in our research, almost none of this happens the first time. It has to go over and over and over again. So what's happening is it takes a lot of iterations to make this stuff work. And we divide it into three different areas. And we have this compu computation area, the coordinating, coordinating with the author, and coordinating with the journal, coordinating with the administration. And then you have this managing of the data and the text. Well, there are a lot of tools to do that, right? There's lots and lots of tools to do that. But they're not organized and managed around. So that's what CORE is going to do. We want to support and promote this effort by streamlining it and working with journal and manuscript uh, situations where we can actually work with them and pair up and partner with these with the repository. We want to facilitate this planning and tools across this line. We want to be able to assist you. So we're here to help. That's what Odom does and that's what CORE 2 is going to do. We're here to help. We have curators. We have statisticians, we have data scientists. We can help in this uh, reproducibility plan. It has taken, up to now, on average, it takes six hours of this back and forth. Six hours. That's a lot of time, and sometimes that doesn't count the waiting, because sometimes those emails sit in an email box for a day. You know, People are gone, they're not available. So this six hours is spread over a large area of time. What we're wanting to do is reduce that because these things, even though things are free, there, is, there are costs involved. And what we want to do is make this sustainable. Right now, only the journals can afford to pay six hours of statisticians' time, six hours of curators' time, can afford to do this. That's not acceptable. We want to be able to build tools that create this cloud environment where a author can submit that data and be able to immediately access tools that can rerun those experiments online, encapsulate them in an environment, and save that environment, and it's replicable. It's a fair process where the researcher sees that data, they see that data in action, and yes, now it's not only worked on your local machine, but it's also worked on a third-party machine in the cloud, in this repository environment, 
And now, once this is complete, the curator and the statisticians can look back at it and say, yes, we agree this is reproducible science, and we can put a badge on that and save it. That would be much less expensive because that back and forth. In many cases, it is not someone trying to uh, uh, pull the wool over someone's eyes, as my grandmother used to say, or try to surprise people. They're just making simple mistakes. They're forgetting that they used a special a way to do the data, or the weighting of the data, or a special method, and they just did not include it in that documentation. And they need to learn. What we found out is through this experience, the second time our author submits a proposal and some data, it's much better. The third time, it's even better because they're learning what things are required to be reproducible. So we want to help that, and we don't want to be in the way. We want to help. We're here to help and learn. So we're hoping that this core two environment will become so beneficial that now a researcher could go online, click a button, and very inexpensively and cheaply and hopefully nearly free be able to prove that they have reproducible science, and we can do that for many, many, many journals around the world. We are here to help, and I want to thank everyone, and we'd be happy to help with folks manage data. That's what we're here for. And uh, I, I do have three minutes left, but what I will do, I want to leave that three minutes for all of you to ask really good questions, because we have a great team of people who can answer them. <laughs> thank you.